Good morning to Associate Professor Abdul Halim. So we are from Group 4 and our title is Awareness of Future Role of Models Civil Engineers Towards the Professional Networks. So, George Design Consultants Adrian Perhat is a consulting firm registered with Company Commission of Malaysia. The businesses aim to run a new consultancy engineering firm efficiently and effectively, adopting modern technical method and operational resources. The company is expertised in concrete design, include multi-story buildings using conventional reinforced concrete, pre-stressed concrete, precast concrete or composite construction. So this, here is the organization charts. The director is Siti Naseha, project manager is from Yihao, structural engineer is Yuchi Long, and me as consulting engineer. Alright, for project background, our project title is a proposed construction of three-story semi-detached shell at Alam from Ipia Tropica, Shah Alam. So the property is in Shah Alam District, Selangor, Malaysia. It is located at 5km from Bandar Shah Alam and next to LKSA and Kersas Highway. So the property is a semi-detached type. An estimate land area is 36 feet and 79 feet. For build-up area is 3,666 square feet. So Alam topic in Pian Tropica home design to suit different household needs. Price of one unit is between 550 thousand to eight hundred thousand springgates. So the duration of the project is to be complete, completed is roughly twelve months and the project cost is about um twelve millions. So here are the satellite view and key plan of Alam Impian Topika Shah Alam. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, our good morning to Doctor Nanya Chong Yihao and today I want to present about the professionalism in the workplace about the consultant. So professionalism is defined as the individual conduct and work. Professionalism is how people displace their behavior, attitude and level of skill in the workplace. So there are six characteristics of professional style in consultant. So the first one will be the ethical style. So a uh, ethical consultant must have set a principle which define the ethical behavior and guide the consultant action towards those behavior. So this means having an ability to discern between the right and wrong and make decisions that are in the best interest of everyone work. So the next one will be the authoritative star. Authoritative star, the consultant should be head unselfishly. Consultant engineer displays motive for professional practice, they are not selfish. The next one will be a responsible star. Therefore, a, a responsible consultant engineer will provide efficient interface with all the engineering system and processes and ensure adherence to all to all best industry practice to resolve all client issues. The next one will be a theoretical star. So a consultant engineer, for example, could advertise and could convert the theoretical, theoretical underpinning of idea and activity in terms of service. So the consulting engineer must able to assess the professional practice in light of new information and situation. The next one will be a committed staff. So a committed consultant engineer will spend the time beyond a call or duty. The next one will be the telecture staff. So the consultant will read all the current journal and keeping the address of technical at once. The next one will be the possession process model of communications. They are standard measures, medium, channel, receiver, meaning, feedback and confirmation. The next one will be a problem solving according to the professional practice. So the first one, so normally there will be the problem definitions and also the analysis. The last one will be the evaluation and revision. The next one will be the ethical guide and discussion in implementation. So the ethical decision making is Center to practice for construction, engineering, and management. So the expectation and standard for professional effort, which is for high value of consultant, there must be some capacity they need to focus, which are technical expertise, consulting process, and third party property. So they also the demonstrate the professional in the workplace, which is the professional will utilize their knowledge and training to the standard they chosen the profession. Thank you. Salam sejahtera, Doctor. My name is Liu Chilong and my train number is F170237. So I'm going to explain about the affordable green technology. Green technology is a technology which is environmentally friendly, developed and used in such a way so that it doesn't disturb our environment and conserve natural resources. So the fundamental principle of green technology is to increase the structural efficiency, energy efficiency, material efficiency, waste and toxic reductions. So for the structural efficiencies, we can select the appropriate land for development. In this case, we can select the already urbanized area for the development so that we can minimize the development footprint such as the development of road building and other facilities. We also need to avoid to make the major changes to the wildlife habitat and the lands and the topography of the site. Next is the building orientations to optimal solar heating and daylighting. Next is the energy efficiencies. We can use the renewable energy such as solar energy for our house. So for, there are two devices which are flat plate collectors and collect, concentrating collector for solar energy. 
plants. Then we can use we can install the five plate collector for hot water heating in our house. Next is the water efficiency. We can install the water saving devices. We use grey water and rain water, which the grey water is the wastewater from the kitchen, shower and also washing machine. Next is the is to control the water leakage. For the material efficiency, we can use the recycled aggregate in new building and also we can reduce the cement usage and we use concrete with partial replacement of supplementary cementitious material. Next is the waste and toxic reductions. We can do the waste management with waste hierarchy, prevention, reduce, reuse, recycle, and disposal. The consultant also need to consider the natural disaster factor in the sustainable construction. So for the flood, consultant need to concern the rainfall intensity during drainage design to avoid flooding. For the landslide, the consultant can do cut and fill activity to reduce slope of soil and also do soil reinforcement to improve the soil stability. Next is the innovation and infrastructures. We can do the research and development such as green chemistry, environmental impacts associated with pollen cement during productions and transportation such as greenhouse gases emissions. So we can design a sustainable cement, but we need to consider the chemistry of raw materials, their processing, binding phase, material properties, performance and use chemistry of the waste generator. And next is the green information technology, which is also known as green IT. It addresses energy consumption and waste associated with the use of hardware, software and tend to have a direct and positive impact. We can use the finite element analysis software to investigate the structural behavior of structural elements without doing laboratory tests. Next is the building information modeling to allow the contractor and consultant to have a better communication and thus reduce conflict, reduce construction waste. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Siti Nasir Bitti Ramzan. We metric number of AF170035. I will present about what can the consultant do in the scope of social responsibility and how consultant able to execute the knowledge transfer on education towards the community consciousness. Knowledge transfer can be perceived as the sharing of knowledge and provide the inputs for the sake of problem solving such as the execution of sustainable housing plan and optimizing the available resources and minimize the negative impact of construction industry towards the environment. Moreover, knowledge can also be transferred from one organization to another. The knowledge transfer between two different parties in the project are more effective for the sake of providing success, especially in the terms of economy where the consultant will be hired and ask for their expertise to introduce the new knowledge to the client organization and act as the mediators between the academic work and the practitioners. For instance, consultant will show the path for the client to construct the project while complying with the code of practice and the market demands that emphasize the energy efficiency and higher quality of outcome. The consultant admits that by emphasizing sufficient time and motivation enables most of the knowledge both explicit and tacit to be transferred. What is the explicit knowledge and what is the tacit knowledge? Explicit knowledge is easy to understand and share through the books and documents, while on the other hand, tacit knowledge is difficult to express and need to be monitored close closely uh, through the mentoring system and informal meeting. Nowadays, as we are already surrounded by the advanced technology, knowledge transfer are able to be delivered in more effective method with the implementation of database technology as shown in this figure. Sustainable construction method are able to spread awareness between the parties involved in the construction industry such as consultant and client and this will achieve the mutual benefits between the environment, sustainability and the economic cost benefit. Therefore, we are, as a consultant suggest several approaches to be implemented in the sustainable project we shown in this slide. The first one is low emissibility gas panel able to reflect 60% and 70% of heat so the energy used to lower the temperature in the building will be low. The vehicles facing the waste do not fe feature the glass panels only concrete to minimize the transfer of heat into the buildings. The third one is the height design the ceiling and open interior design concept allow natural light and air through the skylight and solar panel and airways can reduce the shed the usage of artificial lighting during the day. Four use the material with the insulating properties to keep the heat out and five to utilize the green concrete made from plastic waste and for the green spaces intend to reduce the carbon footprint and heat gain and lastly use LED that consume at least 70% less energy and last longer. Therefore, sustainable construction method capable to affect the environment positively and able to mitigate several issues such as climate change and pollution. The example is 
the utilization of green concrete where the green concrete is manufactured from the waste or residual materials such as plastic and require less amount of energy for its production. The broader the usage of green concrete to lower the usage of traditional concrete in the construction industry and at last lower the emissibility, the emission of carbon which could contribute positively towards the climate change mitigation. Therefore, the pollution mitigation approach, the better the consultant and client abide with the specification of GBI, the better the impact of the construction industry in the terms of eco ecological footprint, sustainable development and carbon management because green building emphasizes better quality of living through its mechanism of energy efficiency, water efficiency and efficient waste management in this figure. That's all from me. Thank you. This section will discuss project outcomes. So in this section, present on our construction project, deal with construction and contract laws. This to ensure the legitimate and legal in the construction industry in Malaysia. By achieving these professional practices, we establish a well-professional and work environment. The figure illustrates the legal source of construction law. It categorizes to written law and unwritten law. So construction law is legal and legal term of art, not a technical one. It is used to cover the whole field of law which is in one way or another affects the construction industry. Contract law is a basic law that governs and relates to most aspects of human life. For example, marriage, sell or transfer properties, services and rights. The Contracts Act 1950 govern the law of contract in Malaysia. So there are seven elements of contract. The number one is offer, the second one acceptance, the third is lawful of joint consideration, the fourth consists of certainty of items, next is the intention to create legal relations, the sixth is legal capacity to contracts, and the seventh is free consent. So there are four ways of method a contract can be determined by performance, the second is consent or agreement between parties, the third is proof of contract, and the lastly is impossibility of performance. So. When there is a breach of contract, the innocent party is entitled to one or more of the following remedies. Damages. So, remedy can claim by an innocent party for the damage, loss, or injury he has suffered for breach of contract. Next is the specific performance. So, a court order to force the defaulting party to perform what he has promised to do in the contract. The lastly, in the injunction, is an order of the court directing a person to refrain from doing or continuing to do an act of complaint of, complaint of or restraining him from continuing an omission. So this section will discuss the feedback. So throughout the professionalism in the workplace, it illustrates how the consultants show professionalism in their works and how they do the communication and solve problems. So to achieve professionalism in the workplace, it will make our company to be trusted and will have a good reputation. It means we didn't reveal the secrets and details of clients to competitors. But if we do so, the company will have a bad reputation and hard to success. So by achieving the X steps of professional communications, it will help our company in the success of transferring a message to the target receiver. However, this step can result in non-delivery of message and therefore in communication failure and lead to the bad reputation of our company. Next, with an effective problem solving, we will gain a good image and trust from the clients. By achieving ethics in decision making, our company will have an outstanding input such as knowledge, experience, creative thinking, and above all good risk taking abilities. Next, for achieve, achieving the expectation and standard for professionalism at work, it will manage to facilitate evaluation of cost, time, and technical performance of the client on the projects and therefore help manage plan, schedule, and budget. So by achieving green building, it must reach and comply with fundamental principles such as increase the structural design efficiency, energy efficiency, water efficiency, materials efficiency, and waste and toxic reductions. From knowledge transfer, it can conclude that consultant can share knowledge with clients to implement the idea of sustainable construction methods. Mutual understanding for smoother progress. According to sustainable practices employed by consultant, there are several proposed suggestions to implement sustainable construction based on green building index. In relation to chapter 6, the cost that this sustainable construction for housing, known as green building based on the specification, able to mitigate the climate change and pollution. So by practicing sustainable construction towards environment, it might affect the environment positively. So in conclusion, the assessment of the plan building of a three-story semi detached house in Alam Piantoprika, Shah Alam helped us to gain a better understanding of the professional consultant role during the various stages of the construction process. So throughout the process, we have learned and appreciated the value of professional as works following a well-structured procedure from start to finish. The project also complies with all the construction and contract law requirements. It fulfills professional practice, ethics, legal, innovation and infrastructure, social responsibility, sustainable and professional environment. Last but not least, we learned that professionals involved in construction must deal with project management, which acts as a mediator between the various members of the project teams. 
So throughout this project, it may enhance the awareness of the profession and works about the role of a civil engineer nowadays.